Rivers are really important to me and to my family. You know, we come down here, we fish, or we bird watch, or we picnic, or we tramp in the river. You get touched personally. Yeah. So, um, for our local river, we used to take visitors and kids there, it was our best place. All of those things that add enjoyment to life. We need wild and healthy rivers for that to happen. And I want my daughter to be able to experience the life I had, and so I'll fight for that. This is the place we go when we've had a busy working week and we want to unwind. It's our recreation place, it's a place we go to recreate ourselves. Don't take the rivers away from us, this is the last that we've got. One day we went into the, my backyard and my wife said to me it's full of water and I look out in the backyard and sure enough uh, she's up to her knees in water. In 2009, Trust Power, a New Zealand company, put forward a proposal to increase hydro generation and irrigation in Canterbury. The proposal is currently going through the hearing process where government appointed commissioners examine the benefits and disadvantages. To be able to go through with their plan, Trust Power needs to amend the water conservation order currently in place on the required. Water conservation orders are like national parks for rivers. They provide protection under the Resource Management Act and the flows that are set out in orders mean that you can't take more uh, than's provided for in the order and you've got to actually sustain water quality in the river as well. The Rakaia River winds down from the Southern Alps, through the plains and out to sea. So what is Trust Power proposing? And why are some people passionate about it not going ahead? Essentially, Trust Power's plans are to gradually increase the hydro generation and irrigation capacity. Lake Coleridge is already part of Trust Power's hydro generation scheme, where water is released into the river to create power. They also partly operate High Bank, a power station and irrigation facility. Firstly, they want to pump more water out at High Bank and build a siphon to irrigate the north side as well as the south side. Secondly, they want to build a canal, put power stations along it and irrigate the north side without the cost of pumping. To do that, they need permission to store water at Lake Coleridge because the current water conservation order does not permit this. In Lake Coleridge, stored water means water that has already been consented to other consent users and that they can take that water when the river flows are acceptable to take, uh, they say they'll, tell, they'll be able to tell the difference between normal water and stored water. I think it's a pretty complex um, process, really. Trust Power wants to increase the number of days per year that the river is allowed to flow at its minimum from 24 days to 57 and to store that water at Lake Coleridge for its irrigators. They also want to be able to divert up to 70 cumex, which is approximately 6 million cubic metres per day, into their canal, irrespective of the low flow minimum for power generation and irrigation. That's really concerning when you start taking those large amounts of water out of the river because it's a braided river and there's a whole ecosystem built up around that kind of river and it's braided which means there are channels running all through the river and there are islands and on those islands the birds, uh, specific birds breed. This is public property. It doesn't belong to the dairy farm, it belongs to us. Well, they say, oh, we need to put in more generation and so forth, and they can create wealth out of creating need. I think that's wrong. The, the, the vital structures that hold us together should be nationally owned. They shouldn't be privately owned. It just doesn't make sense. This beautiful country, which is home for me, and I don't have any other home, has been broken up and sold off and given away. It's not going to get any better, it's getting worse. You, I'm saying that the data that they're using has got to be up to date. It's got to be within the last three to five years 
Uh, otherwise, it's a waste of time. You go back 30 years and say, oh, oh, this is the data that proves that this doesn't happen. That's just rubbish, in my opinion. It just, and it gets too technical. If you, if you try and write a submission, it's, you can get, they, they attack it so much that unless you've got scientific data, you go nowhere. So the only way that I could get around that was take photos. Well, if you look at the water conservation order for the Rakai that was set must be nearly 20 years ago, the scientific information that was available at the time is far less than what we have now. If you look at the most recent review, there's been a 10 year review of low flows. Sometimes it's found that the flows that were set 20 years ago need to be increased. So what we're seeing now is increased flooding at the river mouth because of this greater constraint. We don't fully understand what is going on. Um, if there is going to be further land use intensification, greater use of water, then we need to manage it very carefully. It needs a more sophisticated approach to water management. I hope through that hearing process that we're going to get a good decision which says leave the water in the river or at least scale the scheme down. There were documents um, that Frost and Berg got under the Official Information Act which showed quite clearly that government wanted to remove the roadblocks to irrigation in Canterbury. What do I think about fairness um, and the way the government operates with us, um, with, with water issues? I don't know, I don't know. Um, I haven't found anything that is fair so far in the six years that I've been involved with water. Look at us, we're the wealthiest people on the earth here. How can anybody tell me that we're bankrupt? We can't. I actually would go so far to say as a happy economy depends on healthy resources and healthy rivers and and they just don't get it. That's that's the message we have to get through. That we're not going to have a healthy economy if we keep destroying everything. If we protect our rivers, we are creating options for future generations. If we continue business as usual, we're undermining our whole identity as New Zealanders. The sap of life, that's what the river is, and that's what we all are, this, this living thing. I mean, people want to take water away from us. I don't know, it, all it will leave is desiccated husks of people. Our water, once it's lost to endless schemes, is gone forever. For the generations that follow us, they must have a voice for tomorrow. Only we can give it to them, today.